First, we need to determine how much are the reaction forces in this problem. There are two supports on the left side. That means we need to put two unknown forces here, right? I'm going to call these two unknown forces as A sub Y, which is a reaction force of A in the Y direction, and A sub X. There is a one reaction force at B because we have a ruler support here. I'm going to call that BY, okay? Now we need to use equilibrium equation to determine those reaction forces. Um, there are three equilibrium equations in general that you can use for determining those uh, reaction forces. So first of all, sum of the forces in the x direction is going to be equal to zero. And there is just one force in the x direction, that means Ax is equal to zero. The other one would be sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to zero. And in that case, there are two forces that are pushing the structure downward. So we have P plus W multiplied by the length. So that distributed load is acting on the length of A from A to B. So the resultant force of that would be W multiplied by A. That would be equal to two reaction forces that we have in the y direction, A sub y plus B sub y. In this case, the left side is known, so I can plug the values in. P in this case is given to be 1,200 pounds and W is 450 pounds over feet multiplied by 14 feet. So we would have AY plus BY equal to uh, that given number. Now I'm going to use some of the moments equal to zero. AX and AY, they are not going to have any moment reaction. We do have BY multiplied by that distance, which is A, or 14 feet. There are two other moments that are produced by distributed load and the concentrated force, that W and P. So that W multiplied by A would be the resultant force, and the resultant force would be on the middle of that distributed load. So that would be WA multiplied by A over 2. That would be the moment caused by that plus P, or that distributed load, multiplied by the distance of that load to this corner, which is A plus B. I can say that BY is equal to, I'm going to cancel out A from the sides, so that would be WA over 2 plus P multiplied by A plus B divided by A. Now I can plug the numbers and calculate how much would be the reaction force at that point. And that would be 4860 pounds. And now I can plug that back into the first equation. Knowing By, we can determine how much is Ay. And if I do the calculation, that would be 2640 pounds. So this is the way for us to determine the reaction forces. So that part is clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, right. so you have done this part right. All right, now we get to the other part, which is a little bit more tricky. And that is drawing the shear and moment diagram. Okay, I'm going to use graphical method for doing that. There are different ways for doing that. I'm just using this way, which to me is easier. I mean, you can do any way that you know. To draw the shear diagram, there is a concentrated force which is equal to the reaction force on the left side, which means that there is a jump upward. Mm -hmm. The magnitude of that jump would be equal to that reaction force. So that would be equal to 2640, right? After yeah. this, we get that distributed load. The distributed load is downward, so it means that shear forcing the element is going to decrease with a linear constant slope mm -hmm. okay so that's going to go all the way like this to the other end on the left side we know that the magnitude of shear force is 2640 we don't know how much is the shear force at point b we haven't determined that yet but we know that slope of this shear diagram would be equal to w so that would be equal to 450 pounds per feet so how much would be that amount of shear force at this end? We know how much is the initial point, we know how much is slope, so we can determine that. Shear force would be initial value, which is 2640, minus slope multiplied by the length. So we have W multiplied by A. If I do the calculation, we would get 
36.60 pound. At this point, there will be another jump because there is a concentrated force of By, so there will be a jump. I'm going to use another color to show that. So this is going to jump up all the way to, say, this point. How much is this jump that would be equal to the reaction force that we have at that point? Mm -hmm. So we have 48.60, right? So 48.60 minus 36.60, which is the shear force on the left side, would give us 1,200 positive. So that would be the amount of shear force after we go to the other side of that reaction force. So I think on that problem, I ask you to determine how much is the shear force on the left side of that reaction support and on the right side of that, right? Mm -hmm. On the left side, it is, in this case, it's 3660. On the right side, it's negative 3660 plus that reaction force. So this is discontinuous. It is not going to be equal to each other on the okay. left and on the right. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So what is very important here to understand is that the shear force is not going to be continuous before and after that support, right? Okay. Now after this, because there is no distributed load to change that shear force, shear force is going to remain constant, equal to 1,200 all the way to the other end. And once we get to the other end, there is a concentrated force of 1,200 that makes it back to zero. So that shows that the shear diagram is right. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that is the way that we can build the shear diagram. Now let me move on to how to determine the moment diagram. We can identify three different areas on the shear diagram, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to label them as A1, A2, and A3. So area 1 is the area of the left triangle, area 2 is the area of the right triangle, and area 3 is the area of the rectangle on the, side, the right side, okay? Now we want to build the moment diagram. For building the moment diagram, now again we are going to start from the left side. On the left side, is there any extra, any concentrated moment? No. no. Is there any fixed support on the left side? No. This is a pin support, yeah. this is not a fixed support, mm -hmm. right? So how much would be the moment on the left side? Zero. Zero. So we are going to start from zero on the left side, right? Now, if we increase, if we go to the right side all the way to the intersection of the shear diagram and the horizontal axis with the area that is shown by A1, mm -hmm. the area under the shear is positive. It means that the moment is going to increase, right? Because the area under the shear shows the change in the moment. In that case, the moment is going to increase like this. How much would be the magnitude of the moment at this point at the intersection of the shear with the horizontal axis? We know that the moment would be equal to the initial value plus the area under the shear diagram. Initial value was zero. Mm -hmm. And once I get to this point, moment as d is equal to area one, because that would be the change in the shear diagram, right? Mm -hmm. So now I need to determine how much is area one. Let's go and try to determine that. So how can I determine area 1? Area 1 would be the area of this triangle, right? Mm -hmm. We know how much is the height of that triangle is 2640, but we don't know how much is the length of that. Let's call this length as x. We can determine how much is that x. We know slope of this triangle, we know the initial value, so I can say that x is equal to the initial value 2640 divided by slope, which is 450, okay? So from that, 5.87 feet, okay? That shows where the shear diagram is intersecting with the horizontal axis. Now knowing that, I can determine how much is area 1. So area 1 would be 1 half of 2640, multiplied by x, which is 5.87. And if I do the calculation, that would be 77 
40 pound feet. All right. Now, if I move to point B, the area under the shear diagram is negative, which means that the, the moment is going to decrease, right? Mm -hmm. In that case, I need to add up A1 and A2 because A1 would be the initial moment, A2 would be the change at that, mm -hmm. right? Area 2 would be equal to negative 14,900 pound feet. So now we have positive 7740 and we are going to subtract 14,900. So the moment is going to decrease to a value like this. And in that case, that would be negative 7160 pound feet. Okay. All right. Now I want to go and determine how much is the moment at the other end. In that case, if I move from left side of B to the right side of B, do you expect to see any jump in the moment diagram? No big jump, it would just be more of a yeah. linear thing. So there is no jump at that point. Yeah. Why? Because it's one, since this is linear, this it would be squared, so it's not going to go really up anything. So when do we have jump in the moment diagram? When there's like a concentrated moment exactly. at a certain point. So if there is a concentrated moment, we would have jump. Mm -hmm. But here we don't have any concentrated moment, so there is no jump. Right. Mm -hmm. This is another point that we have uh, on that question. The moment on the left and on the right side of point B is going to be equal to each other. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case for shear. The shear is going to jump from left to the right because there is a concentrated force. Mm -hmm. But there is no concentrated moment, so the moment is not going to jump. Okay. Now, if I want to get to the determine how much is the moment on the right corner of this beam, First of all, I know that's going to change to vary linearly. Why? Because shear diagram is constant, it means that the moment is going to be linear, one degree higher than that. So how much that would be the moment at the right end? The moment at C would be sum of the area of the under shear diagram all the way to the right. So moment at C would be A1 plus A2 plus A3. And if I add them all together, I would get 0.